Lucas. Oh, that is gorgeous. Specializes in luxury goods. This is an oil painting of me painted 15 years ago. Here, asset rich. Check it out. But cash poor clientele. Nearly uh, two to three million pounds. Two to three million pounds. Exchange their possessions. Big money. Ka-ching! <laughs> the mind-blowing amounts. We can offer you a hundred thousand. What? The man in charge. Something about a vehicle with a cannon on it. Is entrepreneur James Constantino. I like dealing in unusual items, but the ones I'm most interested in are the ones that make me the most money. This time, a blinged up Bentley. Whoa! That is lovely. It's sort of hanging off. A perilous plane ride. It's bumpy, bumpy. Why is it bumpy? And James is faced with a crisis. Oh dear, I can't believe what's just happened to me. Welcome to the world. Another happy customer of Posh Porn. high-end pawnbroker James, it helps to be a particular type of person. I think people's first impressions when they start working at Prestige is, what the hell have I let myself in for? Beautiful piece of art just coming. <laughs> James needs mothering a bit, but let's face it, he knows that. Um, and he's got a great team around him that does all the organisation for him. You couldn't send Lawrence in and put an apple on his head, could you, for me? This morning, some members of James's team have dropped a bombshell. Oh dear, I can't believe what's just happened to me. After having recently lost gemologist Michael, <sighs> God. things are going from bad to worse. We've had two other resignations, uh, people moving on. Um, I don't know where I'm going to go, to be honest with you. Deborah, you can yeah. pop in a sec, could you? Sure. You look very serious. I'm James. a bit stressed, to be honest with you. The thing is, they're not leaving because of the business, they're leaving because other circumstances. Yeah, but all at once, though. I know. That's terrible, I isn't it? Know. I mean, it's a difficult void to fill, what mm. with uh, Michael and all his skill sets that he uh, brings to the business. And um, Jacob's going to live the other side of the world, yeah. so that's going to be a really long walk in yeah. the mornings. <sighs> Delif as well, yeah. What have I done to deserve this? Well, don't worry about it. I've got it covered. I've already got three interviews lined up for next week. Well, there's one thing I haven't told you. What's that? You're not leaving, are you? My resignation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Oh, your position would be easy to feel, James. <laughs> oh, God. If it carries on any more like this, I think I will resign. Seriously. <laughs> it's sorted. It's sorted. I'm feeling quite nervous, actually. They're, in the end, they'll be just me and Deborah sitting here, surrounded by jewellery, handbags, cars and art. I don't know what we're going to do. James's next inquiry is something he likes to deal with all on his own. Well, this is absolutely amazing. A fella's just sent in a Bentley GTC, which is a convertible, and they drive phenomenal. They're a big old car, but they don't half go. This one has had a lot of work done on it. I mean, it's uh, been gimped up to the eyeballs by the looks of it. The guy's looking to raise £50,000. The only thing that could be better than this is two Bentleys, to be quite honest with you, in black. is the owner of the Bentley, entrepreneur and ex-Big Brother housemate, Chelsea. Just got to ring up old Callum Best. <sighs> Welcome to the O2 Messaging Service. Big Brother was a bit of a funny thing. Um, I didn't need to do it for the money or the fame. The reason I did it, it was it was another tick, I suppose, on the box of something I haven't done. Nobody ever seems to pick up my phones in the morning. Not like me. Up at the crack of dawn, making a couple of quid money. It's all about the money. I do at least about three, four thousand pound a month on clothes. Everything I buy, I buy four of. Chelsea made his fortune in fashion photography. I've got hundreds in my house in Chelsea. I've got hundreds of the same old stuff in my house in Sweden. I've got hundreds. Again, all of this duplicated in my house in uh, Tenerife. That fashion business actually took off, so I sold that for a good chunk of money. And then I said, I'm going to retire. Um, but I couldn't retire, actually, because I'm such a workaholic. I've got so much energy. This is quite nice. 
this is a bit like the football factory, you know, a bit naughty. Like, oi, do you want some? Come over here, son, come and get some. In my so-called retirement, I've opened up in the last two years nine businesses. It's whatever I see that can make money. This is the gap. This is what we need the money for, the restaurant here. And he's about to open another business in Windsor. Basically, we've got the uh, restaurant downstairs and we've got the funky bar upstairs. It's going to be very bling, loads of chandeliers and, and guys, DJ over there in the corner playing funky house music, which is exactly what I like. We love a bit of funk. You know, we want people to come in here and drink bottles of Cristal, Champagne and Dom Perignon. It is a massive place, that's why I need the money. I've got to pay all these people, yeah? You know, nothing happens without money. You don't need 50 large, 50 grand, 50 Gs. That's what I want. I want it in my hands. I want to see and smell the money. Do you know what we call this car? This car's called a Let's Have It car. Let's have it. To help raise the cash, Chelsea is looking to loan against his convertible Bentley GTC. I've had that for three years now. I've spent a load of money on it. Well, I've got 20 grand just in the boot. Two base bins, custom made, carbon ceramic. And when that thing goes, right, it will blow your brains off. I think James is going to love this car. This will be the best car that's driven, I reckon. It's going to be the fastest and the most luxurious, for sure. Come on, let's have it! In Deansgate, Manchester, Assistant Manager Howard is dealing with one of the most common items that comes through the pawn shop's doors. Just had um, an email come through from a lovely lady called Emma. Um, she's got a diamond ring. It says here that she had it bought for her for £25,000. She's looking to part with it to raise some money. Uh, she thought it'd be a nice idea to actually um, show me who I'm talking to via the email. So she's um, she sent through a nice picture of her. So she looks quite a, a nice character. Glass of fizz on the phone and I love those nails. Whoever said less is more is lying. <laughs> Hi, little one. <laughs> Hoping to sell the ring, along with nine other pieces of jewellery, is 34-year-old mother of one, Emma. It's so nice having um, my makeup done. Um, it's just it's just really nice and relaxing. And it's just like sat getting pampered, really. And then you are just about done. Yeah, yeah. All finished. Thank you. Stand still. I have a daughter called Sophie. She's 16. I had her when I was 18. This is Dolly, Sophie's horse. We've had her like just over a year and a half, this one. We've changed horses over years as Sophie's got older, as teenagers grow. Um, Sophie's now doing an apprenticeship down here. She loves it, she's always here, so very proud of them. I am here nearly every day as I work Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays. And then after I've finished here, um, I want to rescue animals. Here we go, well done. I got this to start with for her going into her teenage years. So she weren't bored, hanging about on streets, drinking, getting in with the wrong crowd. You don't want your kids doing what you did and things I experienced too young. Good girl. Ah. Oh, thanks. And my drive is to see, like, probably ever mother parent that the kids don't go out. Great! Hell yeah! I've had a lot of help with my parents, she's very close with my parents. I'm very blessed that way. Her mum and dad have also helped her out financially. So this is the famous Range Rover. Once I sat in it I knew it was coming home with me. Um, I'm very impatient. This one was 12,000. I borrowed half of it, so of my dad for it I borrowed six and a half. And his daughter, he likes to make me happy as I do mine. Um, it's probably done me no favours actually, but there you go, he's a diamond. I do feel guilty that it hadn't already been sorted out. It's way past its time 
for me to have paid that back, but I will sort it for him if it kills me. She is also keen to treat daughter Sophie. I promised my daughter to take her away for doing well in her exams to swim with dolphins. Uh, that's on her bucket list. I'll make that happen for her. To raise the money, Emma wants to sell her diamond ring. This was a old engagement ring. Obviously no ties to it whatsoever. Apparently you're supposed to give the engagement ring back, but one, I didn't call it off, and two, I'm never a girl. <laughs> Along with the ring, she's also decided to sell nine other items of jewellery she's been given over the years. This, because of the chain, is so minute. I was so scared to like wear it at time, so I never did, ever. That's not even touched my skin. <laughs> and then this one, Cartier diamond band ring, was from Mexico. And again, um, it's I've wore it about three times. Also, we've got this, which is a diamond necklace, and it's another piece that's just sat in the box collection. I'd be happy with 22,000 for the engagement ring. Um, as for the other items, I'd say probably a little less than 10,000 more. If I got 32 grand for all of it, I think I'd be pretty happy with that. And I just really need to pay my dad back and do the right thing and I really want to, so I need to sort this to be able to do that. At the pawnbroker's Weybridge branch, the company's longest serving staff member, Lawrence, is intrigued by recent events. So Helen, what do you think of the max exodus of staff at the moment? I know, three three people? Yeah. Is it? Three in a it was a week. Yeah. <laughs> Deborah's doing these marathon interviews of two hours and ten minutes. This isn't a test, by the yeah. way. Do you mind if I show you a watch? No. I mean the average in any business, I think Helen agrees, about twenty minutes. I'm just gonna ask you to have a look at that as if it was coming into your store and a customer wanted to take a loan out on it. What would you do? Clarity. Okay. Every time you go into one of her interviews, you have to take a port loo with you and a bottle of water, and that way you might get through the two hours. Have a seat. James, who totally doesn't like interviewing, I think he did one here that lasted five minutes. I'm a customer, mm -hmm. so did you have a price in mind you were trying to raise on the items? Or? Just wanted to know what it was worth. How much is it worth? Yeah, no problem. It was gone. You know, what, what is right, the five minute interview or the two hour interview where you come out of it and you wish you hadn't applied in the first place? Just tell me where yeah. you think it yeah, is on this chart. Seven, nine, five. There might be an ongoing staff crisis. My ask is calling. But few no, things no, divert no, James's no. attention more than the prospect of a good deal. Oh, how fantastic. This is uh, an amazing thing to come in. I mean, it really is. Um, we don't get presented with that many planes. It's a one-off, there's only one left in the world. The fella's looking for around 50,000, he wants to sell it. I would like to get down there, have a look at it. Not sure if I want to get it in the air, but I don't really like flying much, to be quite honest with you. Let's hear it running and have a little play around with the flappy things for a while. Right, so you're going to be pulling on this, right? And Daddy's going to be releasing on this one, right? OK, start to pull. Keep pulling. The aeroplane belongs to sailing instructor Andy, who lives on the Isle of Wight. So that's how you pull the sail out. Shall we put it away again? Actually, let's keep it out because it's keeping the boat dry. We can't because it might sail away okay. when we're having our tea. So I got into boating when I was about 15, so it was a fairly young age. I started sort of sailing around the Clyde and I wanted to get into yacht racing, so the place to do it was, was down in the Solent. So I came down here to crew on boats, hitchhiking my way around different yachts and getting myself on different, different positions. Now Andy is planning a once-in-a-lifetime sailing trip. 
probably wanted to do this trip for probably getting on 15 years. Actually doing it on my own boat, I've, I've been wanting to do it since I started sailing it. Yeah, so the basic plan is to go from Isle of Wight up to Ireland, and then cruise up the coast of Scotland, then over to Iceland, then Greenland if, if the weather allows, and then spending the, spending the rest of the summer cruising down the Norwegian coast. So the idea is I'm, I'm going to be doing that through 2017, 18, 19, through various legs. My wife and kids are planning to join me for, for parts of that and then finishing off, in, finishing off in Canada. I've been sort of spending a bit of time looking for the right boat, and this, this, yacht, this yacht came available uh, that was perfect. This is the, the new yacht that I'm, that I'm buying and I've bought. The whole thing's going to cost me about 250,000 to get set up, and for the project, I'm about 50,000 pounds short. Andy's also a keen amateur pilot and wants to sell another prize possession to raise the remaining £50,000 he needs for the yacht. So this is my uh, little airship here. It's a uh, Britain Norman a BN3 Nymph. Uh, I've had it for four years. When I first got my pilot's licence, I, um, I, I really wanted my own aircraft, so I was, sort of went on the look for it, and, and I come across it like, literally under a blanket in, in the hangar. It was all packed up and I hadn't flown for a few years. It was out of service. So then I spent two years doing a lot of the maintenance and we had an engineer working on it. It's a wing fold system. I mean, it's not been used at the minute, but when I was in a, a smaller hangar, the wings fold back on themselves. So it makes it, it, makes it much more user friendly and it cuts down on the hangarage costs. For nervous flyers, when I, when I tell them that they've got the fold and wing system, they do start to get a bit edgy about the whole thing, but when they're in it, the, 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 it's, it's safe enough. I don't know what it's worth really, because it's a one-off, it's the only one It's the only one ever been made, so it's a prototype. I'm hoping to raise 50,000 really, mainly because that's the value. I've got that figure you now mainly for the value what I need to put into my boat project. But yeah, no, so it's, it's, sadly it's got to go, but it's time for the next, time for the next challenge. Hatton Garden, memorabilia expert Lawrence has received a regal collection of signatures. Actually, it's quite a nice item coming. It's the programme from the Royal Variety Performance, so actually you can smell how old it is. It's a 1980, that would have made me, I was 18. No, I was two then. <laughs> yeah, it's a 1980, that would have made me 18 at the time. I used to watch these, I think it used to be every Saturday or Sunday night these used to be on. And we always used to sit down as a family and watch them. They were quite good fun, actually. From classic signatures, and a lot of people still around. God, oh, blimey, do we really have haircuts like that? So this definitely helps keep me young. The programme belongs to 78-year-old Bill. The sunshine of the seaside, wonderful. <laughs> Who has been with his partner Sheila for nine years. Oh, what's in on that? Mm -hmm. My ass will get wet. Changing from an old man to a younger man. Changed his hair style, changed his clothes, and look at him. He's about 10, 15 years younger looking. <laughs> there must be the only fella and tying and wear with skinny jeans on. I'm the only man in my age who knows what skinny jeans are. <laughs> in his younger days, Bill was a performer. So, that's the photographs, what I used to call my handouts when I was a, a young singer. Um, I'm not that guy now because I, <laughs> he had hair for a start. I was just a, a young male singer, singing in the clubs. I actually started off when I was in the army, I actually sang with a couple of big bands. And then when I came out of the army, I started to, to augment my meagre income, as it was then. I started singing in, in clubs, in working men's clubs. <laughs> I'm embarrassed now, but I went by the name of Bill Rivers. I used to sing um, modern pop, sort of romantic ballads, yeah. Sort of a Michael Bublé of the day. Bill eventually swapped centre stage for backstage and represented some of the most well-known stars of the day. We were certainly the biggest entertainment agency in the North East. Paul Daniels, when he first started in the business, we became his first, his first agent. The agency was responsible for, for yeah, launching quite a few careers. 
It was 1980. I was at the Royal Variety Show as the manager of one of the artists, Paul Squire. We were backstage, uh, all the, you know, the hangers-on and the artists, and Bruce Forsyth, who was the compere for the show, said, uh, those of you who've got your programmes with you, would you like me to take them backstage and get the artists to autograph them? And we said, yeah, that would be fabulous. And so he did. Never been so delighted in my life. I mean, there I was, you know, as a guest at the show, sitting in the audience, in the, in the rehearsals, and I, I finished off with a, a souvenir programme autographed by all the... And as an autograph collector anyway, I couldn't have been more delighted. Been in the drawer, sitting there in an envelope in the drawer for years, and I thought it'll do far more good to someone who's interested in it than it is than it'll do stuck in a drawer. I once got a quote about 15 years ago that it was worth about 400 quid at that time. If I don't get the 400, it'll go back in the drawer and uh, I'll keep it uh, for another few years and try again. James is heading to Windsor to test drive entrepreneur Chelsea's Bentley. He's hoping for a loan of £50,000 to help fund his new restaurant. I'm always excited to get out and look at these cars when they come in. This one is exceptional, so I am exceptionally excited, to be honest with you. I'll tell you what, the car's looking absolutely mint. Mint, or as I, as I like to say, ream. Oh, hi mate. James, my old mate. How you doing? How are you? You're right. Good to see you, yeah. You still buffing her up? I'm buffing it up all for you, my old mate. It looks well buffed, I must yeah. say. What can you tell me about it? What have you had done? So I've had everything done on it. You see these wheels? Yeah. They were silver, diamond cut. I've blacked them all out. The whole car's been de-chromed, and that's a lot of work. I've had the vents cut. You put here. these vents in? Yeah, I've so had them all done. So this isn't standard, then? This isn't standard on this one. I'm surprised to see cream in here. I would have thought you'd have had that blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> you no, probably, probably no. weren't thinking straight then, were you? <laughs> no. So basically, they're heated, mm. ventilated, massage seats on the side. Lovely. Do you use that much? I do, yeah. Bet you do, didn't yeah. you? It looks like you spent a fortune on this, to be honest with you. I have, I have. I've spent at least about £45,000 to fifty grand just doing it up. Do you want to take it for a test drive? Do you think we should? Yeah, I think you should. Lovely. See if the Queen's in. Oh yeah, there she is. At one point, I thought I saw a glimpse of the Queen. Give her a wave. Chelsea probably knew her. Well, you're going to see now what I need the 50 grand for, James. We're going past your restaurant. Going to go past my restaurant and bar? Yeah, have a little look. Go on, just park up there. It's right there. So this is it, yeah. is it? Once that's all done up, uh, you'll be able to come down and eat there yourself as a VIP. Lovely. Can't wait. Yeah. What I like about these is they're so well put together, aren't they? They are. I mean, are. So, look, I do like Ferraris, but they ain't built like these. No. These are the business. These are put together by craftsmen who they know are. what they're doing. It's hand-built. It's a hand-built like, car. I think this is the, definitely the sexiest Bentley I've driven. Yeah. I'm getting a little bit aroused, to be honest with you. I'll have that effect on, uh, on people as oh, well. Are you sure it's the car? <laughs> <laughs> Driving around in a convertible Bentley was absolutely fantastic. The sun was out, it couldn't get any better than that. And I had Chelsea next to me and his barnet. Oh well, there you are James. That was a very pleasurable, I must say. I hope you enjoyed it. Absolutely fantastic. But look, just to go through the numbers again, what is it you're actually looking for? 50 bags of sand, 50,000. 50K. All right. Is uh, that doable? Well, look, I mean, I need to go back and uh, do a bit of research. I shall see what comes up. Brilliant. I shall wait for your call. Fantastic. Cheers, Chelsea. Thanks, Thanks a lot, okay. mate. Cheers. Yes, thank you. I think he really loved it. He should love it. The car's bang on. I usually don't like these sorts of uh, high performance cars when they've been messed around with, but to be honest with you, that one is a bit special. But 
I really need to make sure I'm securing my position uh, and to understand the second hand value of that vehicle given that it's had so many modifications. Hatton Garden, Deborah's intensive interview process has come to an end. We have a new starter on Tuesday. Oh, fantastic. After all that. Her name's Alexandra. She was a lovely girl, weren't she? So Very nice. Does she know what she's letting herself in for? Not yet, but I thought it was better not to tell her. She speaks fluent French, being half French. She will obviously be able to say Hermès and Louis Vuitton. No one else will know what she's talking about. Though. Yes, they will. What's uh, Hermes in Spanish then? It's still Hermes. It's, still it's, Hermes. it's Hermes in English as well, James. Lovely, well done, Good. Deborah. Thank you. Au revoir. On the Isle of Wight, sailing enthusiast and amateur pilot Andy is getting his plane ready for James's test flight. You can see it's quite a breezy day today, so when I did the circuit earlier, it is quite bumpy, so he will, he will know that he's, uh, that he's, he's in a washing machine. <laughs> Me and flying don't really go together too well, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't even like commercial flights that much. They get me a little bit sweaty palmed. I'm gonna meet my aviation expert there, and Mike can give me a better understanding of how desirable this aircraft is, because to be quite honest with you, it's not my comfort zone. Mike, how are you? It's freezing, isn't it? Come on, let's go and have a look. Okay. Andy, hi. Oh, hey, hi guys. Mate. Nice James. to meet you. So what can you tell us about it? It's, it's a one-off. It was built as a, as a prototype by uh, Britain Norman, uh, the owner of Britain Norman Aircraft, who build a lot of uh, army aircrafts. I always describe it as a bit of a Land Rover of the sky, really, because it's, it's, it's pretty rugged. And I mean, do you want to have a look at the engine and stuff? Or? Let's have a look at the engine. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well. yeah. Make sure it's got one, shall we? But the engine has a, a very good value before you start because that will go into these kind of planes that are parked over there and they're quite sought after those engines. A little bit sort of hanging on. Like all the bits to be hanging on. Okay. When I saw that on the runway and it was flapping around in the wind, it did worry me a little bit. The thing I worry about the most is the wings folding back when we take off or after we've taken off. That's yeah. my biggest concern. I told you not to mention that. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm not having the size of the pin that keeps the door shut. Have you seen that? Look at that. That's bigger than the one that keeps I'm the wings up. from folding. <laughs> I think we should we take her up for a flight, we'll do a few circuits and maybe sail over cows and have a look at the yachts. Or we could just go up and come straight back down again. Just uh, clean yourself in and get yourself all uh, buckled up there. As we got sort of buckled in and taxied to the runway, certain parts of my body did start to twitch. You're my first passenger. Oh my God. The problem with being up with Andy is that I'm a control freak. I like to be in control of my own destiny. And with Andy, I clearly wasn't, and that was a worry. It's a bit bumpy, it's bumpy. Why is it bumpy? The propeller's not turning, can we? Still everything down its At one point, the engine seemed like it cut out. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, you know, This is normal. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, no, it is, it is. I thought my life was over and I realised that I hadn't written a will or even recently done a stop take. That was an experience. That went really well. I mean, I was a little bit nervous, I'll be honest with you, when we first got up there, but I think I got into my stride. Yeah, yeah. And you're looking at 50K, yeah? 50K would be ideal again. It's difficult to, I, I don't really know what it's worth because there's nothing to compare it against. So that's the, that's a difficult thing. Well, me and Mike will go away, have a little chat, and we'll, we'll have to come back to you. Yeah, like, no, sounds good. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye, bye. I think she's a lovely thing, so hopefully these guys can see the same as me and hopefully can raise the 50,000 to, to, get, to get Yacht Discovery. This stage, I don't know whether the thing's worth five grand or a hundred grand. It's almost impossible to value because it is a one-off. Buyers for that type of thing 
are going to be very scarce, but that's what we do and that's what we specialise in, bringing buyers to the table. Let's see and let's try our best and see if we can get something done. In Manchester, mom of one Emma's 10 pieces of jewellery have arrived at the pawn shop and Howard has been tasked with appraising whether they're worth the £32,000 she wants. This is a real little gem here. Um, we've got a lot of um, small diamonds all clustered together. You'll always um, have a greater value in one larger diamond than lots of smaller diamonds put together. Saying that, when you add them all up, there's a fair amount of diamond content in this piece, so it will add to the value. These are not diamonds at all. These are actually cubic zirconias, stones that look like diamonds. Um, they have similar sparkle to diamonds, but when you look close up, uh, they're not. So unfortunately, that is not gonna have any great value at all. Here we have the centerpiece of the lot, your large princess cut diamond offset with your smaller diamonds in the shoulder. There's even some on the surround here. The color's good and the clarity, you know, these big factors in which determine the value of a diamond, um, they are of a good standard. So all in all, we've got a, a really nice selection of jewellery. Um, some really nice pieces like the designer Cartier, which will sell well in the second-hand market as a brand. Other pieces, not so. Um, smaller diamonds, um, the money at the end of the day will mainly rest on the, the diamond ring, uh, the big princess cut that is her, or was, her pride and joy. Lawrence is keen for a second opinion on retired celebrity agent Phil's Royal Variety programme. So he's taking it to memorabilia expert Mark. This really is a nice piece of entertainment history. I and mean, you've got some of the all-time greats there, but the big one, Sammy Davis Jr., who's an absolute legend in the show business world. So uh, I'm hoping we'll get a few quid together for it. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Hello, Lawrence. Long time no see. It seems to be ages, doesn't it? It does seem ages. Well, I've got something unusual for you. So I'm going to need your specialist skill on this. So, OK. There we are, mate. What do you think of that? And what it was, this gentleman was actually a manager of one of the acts actually in the show. And he got Bruce Forsyth to get everyone in the show to actually sign it. Just see if there's anything in it that's stand... Ah. Yeah. Sammy Davis Jr. That's the one I thought. We know they're all authentic, we've got all his invitations, everything. Got all that with it? Got everything with it. And let me say, Lawrence, it's in very good condition. A few loose pages there, look, but they're all bound by, by the cord. Yeah. So it's lovely. All the signatures, there's no fadeness to them. Mm. By what I can see, by far, this is the biggest signature in here. Yeah, okay. that's what I thought. That's a proper piece of memorabilia, that, it Lawrence. Is. Always great to see you, pal. And you, sir. Safe journey home. And I'm sure I'll see you soon. You will. Catch you later, mate. See you later. I mean, Mark and I have today come up with a price, but the problem is, as usual, is it what the client wants? We've got an idea, we know what it's worth, but it's what, is it what they want? That's the issue. Emma's arrived at the Manchester branch to see Howard. She's hoping for £32,000 for her jewellery collection so she can pay back a loan from her parents and take her daughter on the trip of a lifetime. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. I didn't get much sleep, so eyes are resting on good cheekbones. So, let's see. OK, Emma, if you'd like to take a seat there. Thank you. Just remind me what you needed the money for again. Um, to pay me uh, dad back for a loan for my Range Rover oh, that yeah, I had. Right. And then other things, obviously, as a bonus, I'd like to take uh, my daughter away. She's passed her exams. I mean, you have got some beautiful um, items here, particularly strong on the branded um, yeah. Cartier ring. That's really sought after. Yeah. They sell very well. Um, other pieces, uh, not so much interest in the second-hand market. Okay. So that's a really statement piece. Um, if that was one large pear-shaped diamond, you'd be talking lots and lots and lots of money. Mm -hmm. But it is made up of lots of smaller diamonds. So they don't hold as much value as you might think. 
the necklace, um, really sparkling yeah. and all this, on closer examination, yeah. it actually turned out to be um, it's silver set yeah. and the stones are cubic yeah. zirconias, which yeah. imitate diamonds. And then lastly, your um, beautiful princess diamond. It's in nice condition. Round diamonds are more popular than all the other um, shaped diamonds put yeah. together. Uh, so you will, will always um, sell more round brilliant diamonds. I'll remember that next time. <laughs> next time you get one, yes. Uh, but saying that, it's still a nice sizeable stone, just short of two carats um, and a high grade. So all of these factors we have to, 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 to bring into consideration. So for all of the jewellery together, not including your diamond ring, mm -hmm. We'd be happy to offer you three thousand pounds. Okay. And for the diamond ring, the princess cut, um, we'd be happy to offer four thousand pounds. So, how do you feel about that? Um, what four thousand for this one? Yes, yes, it would be yes. Ah, uh, I I don't know. No, I think I'll have to probably maybe think about it. Obviously, speak to my dad. He's my Sure, Wingman, sure, sure. Counting. And if, if all of these items are sitting in the, in the boxes, yeah. um, never seeing the light of day, yeah. where they could be generating you some money, mm -hmm. um, surely that's a positive. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Right. But yeah, OK, thank you. No Thanks problem at all. Much. Thank you very much, Emma. <laughs> thank you. And um, have a good thing. I will. And um, you know where we are if you need us. OK. All right. It is quite a big drop from what I thought, but I'm not disappointed. I'm not feeling disappointed at all. It is what it is. Whatever's meant to be is meant to be. We're anything in life. So, let's see. At headquarters, James is keeping a close eye on the pawn shop's newest member of staff. Alex, oh. come in a sec. I just wanted to know how you're getting on. Okay. How's it going? It's quite interesting. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. All right. We'll try. It's probably going to be a, quite a lot to take on board mm. over the next few days. Just take a breather. Take it easy. You don't want to rush anything. Okay. I would. Lovely. Well, I understand you speak a bit of French. Yes. Yeah. Des baguettes. <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> oh, that's impressive. <laughs> Deborah has got this thing about pronouncing um, that handbag brand. It begins with an H. Hermès. How's it said? Hermès. Hermès. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> I like it. All right. So what about um, Louis Vuitton and Yves Saint Laurent? <laughs> Was I any good? Yeah, not bad, not bad. <laughs> Lovely. All right, well, it's a good start and um, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Speak to you in a bit. Bye. Cheers. She looks a little bit like a, a bunny rabbit in the headlights earlier this morning, but uh, now she looks like a bunny rabbit in the headlights with a pair of sunglasses on, which is slightly better position to be in. On the Isle of Wight, sailing instructor Andy is waiting for news on whether James has found a buyer for his unique plane. Well, I'm looking forward to the call, yeah, see, what he's, see, see if he's had much interest in it and see if he's managed to find somebody that likes the look of it. I mean, it's a nice little aircraft and it's been well looked after. So we'll have to wait and see what he comes back with. I'm just about to call Andy. Um, he's been in touch with us regarding his light aircraft, hoping to sell it for £50,000. And we have been on to everyone. We have got private dealers and collectors amongst our client list that would be interested in such a such an aeroplane and we've been on to them and we've given them the details um, and I'm about ready to give uh, Andy a call and give him the news. Hi James, how's it going? Andy, you alright? Yeah, good thanks, good to hear from you. Andy, look, we've been um, working away with the aeroplane. Yeah, great. And uh, uh, as you know, um, it being a prototype, a one-off, the market for that type of aircraft is fairly limited. So we've had our work cut out for us in yeah. terms of... Uh, Quite unique. Very unique. I yeah. mean, to the right person, obviously, uh, you know, it was a bit of a, it's a bit of a fine, to be quite yeah. honest. <laughs> Definitely. So I'll tell you... It was 50,000. It was yeah, about yeah. 50 that you were looking It was about 50 I was after, that's right. Um, 
at the moment, Andy, I must tell you that I haven't actually got a buyer at that sort of level for yeah. it. Um, the only thing I can do for you, if it's of interest, I know you're looking to raise some capital. Yeah. Is we can lend you twenty five thousand against the aeroplane. Yeah. If it's an, if it's if it helps you out or gives you a little bit of flexibility in terms of what you're trying to do. Just until I sell it. Yeah, no, that might be an option, James. Yeah, and appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, if you need it, if there's 25 there, if you want to call on it, that's not an issue to yeah. us. But uh, we'll still work away with on the aeroplane and uh, try and get it done. Yeah, no, perfect. No, that that's great, James. We really appreciate all you you guys' effort trying to sell it and find a find a buyer and stuff for it. Cheers, Andy. Okay, Thank you. Cheers, cheers bye. bye. Yeah, no, that's relatively good news. So he's still got he's still got people. Um, James has still got people looking for it, uh, inquiring and stuff about it. And he's offered us a, a twenty five thousand pound loan against it if I did want to take take him up on that. It was a little bit of a shame not to be able to get to the fifty thousand uh, he was looking for as a sale figure. Um, personally, I think the aeroplane is worth every penny of that. It's not over yet. We're still going to work away with it, and you never know. We still might get this deal off the ground, literally. In Tyne and Weir, former agent to the stars Bill is waiting to hear from Lawrence about his autographed programme. I'm full of anticipation. I can't wait to hear how they've, uh, they've got on with the, um, the Royal Variety Show programme and if I'm going to be um, a wealthy man. I mean, I know it won't be a lottery win, but, you know, anything will be nice. We've come up with a price now, and I just hope Bill will be happy with it. Hello, Bill. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Is that Lawrence? It's Lawrence from Prestige. Hi. Yeah, just uh, you give me a major headache with this lovely item you bought. In. Right. I don't think anyone else would have a programme like this. No. Especially signed by so many people. The problem is, is the age of it and obviously the people inside it. it yeah, I understand. Which goes against it. But it's mostly a younger market who actually buy memorabilia nowadays. Yeah, I, I got the picture, Lawrence. Well, the money you're looking for is 400. We'd be happy to buy this off you for 700 pounds. I'll be happy to accept that. Are you happy with that? Very happy. Good, so we've, got, we've exceeded your expectations. Lovely, that's fine, Lawrence. Brilliant. Fine, I appreciate it. Thank you uh, very you're much. You're welcome. I'm, I'm happy. You're a nice man. Cheers, okay. Bill. Thanks, thanks, Lawrence. Cheers, bye-bye. Thanks, bye-bye. Yay! 700. We could actually hear it in his voice. He was absolutely delighted. We've almost technically nearly doubled the money he expected. So it's great. I'm happy. He's happy. What else could you ask for? God, I've sold it. It's gone. It's gone. How much? 700. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm delighted. <laughs> very, very yeah. pleased. Yeah, I'm over the moon for you. Good. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Arriving outside the pawn shop in his modified Bentley is entrepreneur and ex-Big Brother housemate, Chelsea. I'm here to look for 50 grand for my car. You know, I just need it to pay off some builders for the new restaurant that I'm building. We've done our research and I'm happy with what we've found. And I think I'm in a position where we can give, uh, give him some news. You all right, Chelsea, how are you? How are you, James? You all right? Yeah, good, mate. Yeah, you? good. Yeah, very good, thanks. Grab a seat. Well, look, thanks for coming in. I've been rattling my brains and I've been looking at the uh, data, basically, and right. to try and get you to the number you need. And one of the issues we face with the car, and um, it does happen a lot in the business, is when something has been modified or um, sort of played with, in any way, we have to really do our checks in terms of ascertaining the value, because as you can appreciate, if something has been altered uh, more times than not, it devalues it. Devalues it. Yeah. So I had to be really careful and take advice on your vehicle. So, to be honest with you, with the spec that you've got in the colour combination, I'm pretty impressed with it. We've done some calculations, and the figure I've got to for you is 70,000 pounds. Oh, that's brilliant. Is that a... That's amazing. Yeah? Yeah, I'm really chuffed a bit through that. You are? That's fantastic. Yeah. I know you said 50, but if yeah. you need if you need the, the, 
bit extra, it's always there for you. And I'll tell you what, if you don't mind, can I take 60? 60 grand, that's 60 not a problem grand. at all, mate. Lovely. All right, Good brilliant. Well, take your glasses off, I'm going to shake you around. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Thanks a lot, Dave. Cheers, mate. See you soon. Be oh, in touch. Yeah? Oh, be in touch. I'll wire it over to you. Lovely. Thanks a lot. Cheers, mate. Cheers, bye. I'll tell you what, that was absolutely blinding. I got the money I wanted. Actually, I've got 10 grand more. Actually, he offered me 20 grand more. And he's sappy as Larry. He's doing a little star jump as he left and got in his car. He's all over the moon. It's another result for us, it's a car, I love the vehicles that come in, they're big numbers, easy to deal with for me. Um, yeah, it's great to get it done. 60 grand, 60 bags of sand, me old mate, let me tell you, that goes a long way. So uh, I can continue with my project and hopefully get it finished on time. Oh wow, it's not even memorabilia, this is history. The figure that we're able to offer you is... Can I buy a car with that? <laughs>